Brandis, after several late nights and an extra day on the legislative calendar, state lawmakers wrapped up their spring session. The final days were fiery at times, even without longtime House Speaker and GOP foe Michael Madigan. Joining us to discuss what the General Assembly did and didn't get done are House Republican Leader Jim Durkin and Senate Republican Leader Dan McConkie. We did also invite House Speaker Chris Welch and Senate President Don Harmon, who were unable to join us. We will hear from Governor J.B. Pritzker on tomorrow evening's show. So let's get things started with you, Leader McConkie. Republicans have slammed the new legislative maps. In two sentences, tell me why. Well, it's based on faulty data, and it was pushed through in a partisan basis in which Republicans were not even uh, invited to participate. And we couldn't have participated right now because the data that's being used is survey data. It's not even the real census data, which will not be available until mid-August. House Speaker Welch says that these new maps that are passed for Illinois House and Senate districts ensure that all Illinoisans will be represented. But here's some of his speech from the House floor. Take a look around this chamber. Take a look. Take a good look. Look at the diversity in this chamber. Take a look. We represent the state of Illinois. Diversity is the strength of this great state. The leader or the speaker there making the point that diversity is really on the Democratic side of the aisle. Leader Durkin, can you respond to that? Well, I think that uh, uh, those words are strong and they make the headlines, but it's unfortunate that the speaker and 30 of his, mem of his members have lied to Illinoisans of, the, of their position on fair maps. They've campaigned on it. They have all voted for it. They had the opportunity to do it this year, but they turned their back on all the citizens of Illinois and believe that they should be in control of drawing legislative maps to their advantage. And that is what has happened. Each one of the Democrats, top to bottom, have reversed their position on whether or not the legislature should draw maps as opposed to an independent commission, something that I have been promoting and I have pushed for a number of years. This is about power and control. And what I saw the other night was nothing more than what I've seen in the past with Mike Madigan. So the, the playbook is still there. And now it's up to the governor to live up to his promise to Illinois citizens to veto a map that is drawn by elected officials politicians, legislators, which is what happened. So I want the governor to be straight up with Illinois citizens and live up to the commitments that he made as a candidate. We'll continue to ask questions of him about that. Now, each of you, of course, complaining about these maps, but are you planning to take legal action to stop them from taking effect? Leader McConkey? Well, certainly all options are on the table, but right now, the leader is right. What we should be doing is encouraging the governor to follow through, make sure that Governor Pritzker is re reminiscent of candidate Pritzker. He was on the campaign trail and he promised time and time again to support an independent map drawing process and to veto maps that were drawn by politicians picking their own constituents. This is his golden opportunity right now to prove that he wasn't lying to the people of Illinois. Now, Leader Durkin, you've already brought him up, and that is, of course, former Illinois House Speaker Michael Madigan. First session without him. What was this first post-Madigan session like? I expected a lot more. There was a, a, a lot of, you know, harmonious words said in January. Uh, I also agreed that this is a time for us to uh, go from the past and work together uh, uh, on important issues of the day. That's like our budget, pensions, public safety. Um, and uh, I was disappointed. I expected more from uh, Speaker Welch, and uh, it really, nothing has changed from my perspective. And I will say that the way the maps were drawn and the ratio of probably five to one Democrat bills called over Republican bills is even more partisan right now under Speaker Welch than it has been under Speaker Madigan. More partisan. Those are some pretty strong words, but let's move on to the budget. The governor does say that he is going to sign into law the spending plan that Democrats did approve over GOP opposition. He did have more to say about it. Let's give a listen. Republicans like to badmouth the state. 
and yet they're the ones who wanted to irresponsibly spend one-time American Rescue Plan dollars to paper over our structural deficit. In contrast, we Democrats are investing in priorities that will grow and revitalize our economy, improving our fiscal outlook dramatically, and reducing tax expenditures on the wealthiest corporations. Leader McConkie, I'd like you to respond to that. Is this new soon-to-be budget fiscally responsible? No, of course it isn't. You know, one of the biggest things that we have right now is we have tremendous, uh, significantly more revenue than we were expecting, over $15 billion. If you count the unexpected revenue at the state level, as well as the extra money that's come in from the federal government. And the issue at the end of the day is how do we make sure we get through the COVID pandemic a lot of the economic impact that was associated with that is due to Governor Pritzker, it is due to the mitigations that he put in place, the lockdowns, where he was discriminatory, really, in, in the way in which he did those. You know, he would let Walmart be open, but a small business was forced to close, lay off people. And now we have a $5 billion plus deficit in our unemployment insurance trust fund. This is what pays those, uh, you know, those bills, really, for people who have been laid off of work. And the, the, this budget only puts a very, very small amount into that fund to help make that right. So what we're gonna be faced with is very significantly increased taxes, perhaps the biggest tax increases on businesses in Illinois history coming down the road over the next three years, which is going to hurt us being able to really try to climb out of the hole that the governor helped put us into along with the pandemic. You know, Leader McConkie, I don't want to get too far into this, but you did mention the mitigations, of course, more stringent that plan change from the Pritzker administration as the pandemic wore on. Have his actions recently in terms of mitigations in the restore plan been appropriate? Uh, well, I, the biggest problem that I have at the end of the day is he is still doing a go it alone approach. Here we are yeah, over a year and a quarter into the pandemic, and he t decides all, all sorts of issues on his own without allowing the General Assembly to have any sort of input on how it is that he's doing that. Okay. You know, I, I understand giving the governor uh, abilities and authorities for emergencies on a short term basis when we have tornadoes, or fires or things of that nature. But this is a year long plus that he's continued to have huge aspects of state government and frankly, everyday people's lives with and, just him and his pen. And, and that's really problematic from my perspective. Yet the General Assembly didn't really take any action to take that power back during this session when, you, when there was the opportunity to do so. Let's move on now. Um, Leader Durkin, you have voted against a CPS elected school board measure. Republicans in the Senate did as well. But how does that square with your and Republicans' commitment to local control, something we heard a lot about during the Rauner era? Well, I think that you have to throw the Chicago Teachers Union into this, into the factor. They have done nothing except disrupt the management of City Hall the minute after Mayor Lightfoot was elected into office. I don't believe that CTU should take over the Chicago School Board. It is a dangerous, dangerous situation. They are unique from any other school board uh, and any other union in the uh, school board union in the state of Illinois. Uh, I do believe in local control, but I'm not going to give it over to um, a group of activists who have nothing uh, but their only desire is, is to win the uh, mayor's office, and that is their uh, their sole function. And I just can't give them, nor do I have the faith that they would be right for, for the city of Chicago taxpayers and also the kids. But I'd like to mention one other thing based on the budget. If the governor believes it's fiscally responsible, then he has to explain why we're giving the legislature a pay raise why we're doubling the district office allotment that was that's not necessary and also explain why he's using a billion dollars for democrat port projects which is nothing more than a slush fund that and that came out of the federal recovery act the governor needs to explain that and i hope you can answer those questions tomorrow now as leader mcconkey the primary was moved to june in recent days how does that timeline change things, particularly as your party is going to be having to kneel down a nominee for governor? Well, it's uh, certainly a challenge, but the real question to me is, you know, why is it that they did that? And, and it's obvious, they were unwilling to draw congressional maps uh, using ACS, American Community Survey data, because there's, a, there's very stringent rules at the federal level. Every congressional district has to be exactly the same size. 
But the, th the thing is, is that they then went ahead and drew a highly partisan map for the state legislature in order to meet the June 30 deadline that they had to be able to exert their control. That's what this is about. This is about maximizing control of the state and their then willingness to put off the primary and unwillingness to draw a map using ACS data shows just how bad ACS data is for this purpose. The census themselves have said that this data is not to be used for this purpose. Something and yet else the that we'll be keeping our... anyway. It, it, no, Leader Durkin, and, and another measure, part of the budget so expected to sign into law will allow the state to have some sort of vaccine lottery. We don't know a lot of details, but from what you are aware, is this a good use of state dollars? Well, there's a lot of holes in this budget and uh, it's much like you, I'm not aware of it. We were shut out of negotiations week before, but vaccination lotteries just doesn't smell right. It doesn't seem right. I think we should stay on the path of encouraging people to uh, get vaccinated as soon as they can continue with uh, public uh, service announcements. But um, this is a budget that was presented to us at 11, uh, an amended budget was presented to us at 1130 in the morning the other night. So quite frankly, I can't answer that question. 1130, just before midnight, I think you mean. Right. But I understand it's been a couple of long days. It all runs together. We thank very much each of you for spending some of your time here with us after all of that, um, those long hours. So once again, Republican Leader Jim Durkin of the House and Senate Republican Leader Dan McConkie, we appreciate it. Thanks, Amanda.